Okay, uh, good morning, selamat sejahtera, Assalamualaikum uh, Let me uh, continue with aircraft structure repair uh, Let me take you to look at this uh, the repair manual This is the structure repair manual Repair design guideline And most of us as, a, as an engineer for the airlines For the Amaru uh, We not trying to establish a new design or, or trying to research a new way of designing thing uh, the best is we have to follow the aircraft manual because most of the aspect in design has been put into the concept repair and then all the data is available from the manual so we have to strictly follow the uh, the repair design guideline published by the OEM so let's look at the first uh, item, general. Uh, the structure item, this is a caution here. Okay. The structure item for which a repair can be designed using this guideline are uh, identified in the specific SRM identification or and or repair page block. So this is uh, the cautions of using this manual. So whatever we learn from here, we also can use on other aircraft. But the fundamental here, if you use this, this is specific for the aircraft type. But we can use the concept of this on any other aircraft. So the purpose of the repair design guideline published by the OEM is to each repair on aircraft structure has to be capable to sustain the original justified design load for static fatigue damage tolerant requirement. So Whatever you do in design, you must be able to go back to the design objective to achieve the static fatigue damage tolerant uh, loading capability. So in most cases, only static requirement need to be met for the repair principle on the second structure and only those will be addressed in this part. So some cases uh, for the second structure, we can uh, use the uh, principle of static uh, design analysis. Uh, then the static or stress analysis is performed to make sure the structure can withstand and apply ultimate load without failure and without permanent definition. So whatever design guideline here is basically a static uh, design analysis or stress analysis uh, to make sure the structure can withstand the ultimate load. That's why every time you do the analysis, you go back and check whether we have the factor safety 1.5. Okay, they got two main approach. Okay, the first approach will be the all the detail loading are known. Uh, most uh, the OEM will have all the detail loading, and some airlines. What I have experienced in the past for airline which they have many aircraft with them, they maybe buy th almost thousand aircraft or hundred aircraft. And more is almost thousand aircraft. For example, American Airlines, they have many aircraft. They have they have been given. Uh, they've been shared. The, the stress manual, the load manual. The stress analysis document will be shared with them, so they will be able to get access to this uh, loading. So this basically the loading, uh, no one can access except special case. But however, for uh, for us, we are not able to access this. This is the OEM document. So what we have here is we have the second option: no detail or the applied loading are known, and then we have to use reverse engineering methods. If we go to aircraft uh, structure course at Boeing or Airbus, they will explain, they will teach you how to do reverse engineering method. Even though you go for the OEM courses in aircraft structure repair, they will not go into the part one here because none, most of the line, basically none of the line will have access to this document. But that's why they teach us how to use reverse engineering method. So whatever we do in designing regarding load, we use reverse engineering method. So there's a scope and limit to this design guideline. Uh, then this is uh, all the detail. Uh, let's go back to the symbol. So you can see here all the symbol. So if you are familiar with, uh, if you learn mechanics or material structure or extra uh, mechanics or material or you structure uh, strength or material, and this is all the symbol that we use in analyzing the structure strength and stress. So they also stated their factor of safety, which is should be always 
So factor safety is something also we got confused. The best to look at this is whatever load that you design to ratio to the whatever load apply. So they should always have reserve of 50% of load capability or the material compared to the applied. So applied must always be lower than the design load of the material of the structure. So reserve factor uh, which is uh, allowable load, applied load, whatever load that you design to over the whatever load they apply and the reserve factor should be 1.0 but in design requirement only talk about 1.5 so part 25 uh, 303 okay cs25 paragraph 25 303 will talk about safety factor of safety which is uh, all aircraft structure design must meet the 1.5 factor safety then we go into the principal okay repair material and analysis okay this is very important the concept repair has always been given in the SRM uh, for example for the case of Airbus they're giving like uh, almost 12 cases of concept repair but each of the repair when you use a concept repair it's not used as is we have to do checking so analysis we have to do analysis a static analysis for a repair require normally we're looking at the tension check okay tension failure net tension failure looking at shear check okay shear out failure intervert shear compression check compression check which end up in the compressive load you may end up looking at buckling and crippling of the of the meat of the of the part or such okay and fastener fastener load capability so this is a check that you need to do so need mean that every time you do use a concept repair in your design you have to do the check you have to do analysis in detail so that's why yesterday i was talking about the repair uh, we are talking about the angle repair and with now the next one is trying to check or the failure possibility of the repair okay. then uh, okay there is also detail here uh, of the tension shear check and we have here is compression check fastener check okay so all are given and also crippling we also have to look at the crippling or the repair and this is calculation the formula is given for example for maximum tensile you have to multiply the area cross section area which is perpendicular to the load to the FTU or F1.5 times FTY so whichever is less so the thing is when you find the FTY FTU you also look at FTY FTY you multiply by 1.5 whichever is less if 1.5 times say we talk about uh, FTU is 100 okay and uh, talking about uh, uh, FTY is 50 okay so 50 times 1.5 is 100 so basically come to the same point so still FTU is critical so here you just want to check whether FTU critical or 1.5 FTY critical if you multiply by 1 FTY times 1.5 the value is higher than FTU then you use FTU so it means that material is FTU critical so F if you multiply 1.5 times the FTY is lower than FTU then you have to use the 1.5 times FTY which is this is yield uh, critical material okay and then reserve factor is a calculation to that and continue with all the uh, all given so this is uh, just to show you this is section you have to calculate the uh, for the crippling and for the buckling so all the detail here so everything are detailed so this is a concept repair we have the uh, l angle here we damage one of the flange we take out the flange and we put a strap we put another l doubler in my calculation in my uh, previous uh, example i just use a plate i just use a plate just for me to be able to explain to you the detail in the simple way so if you put a double angle it, it will be more complex however 
for standard repair if you damage a flange you should install a L doubler so we have also show you the calculation in detail so there are many more you may have uh, L angle another L angle doubler repair yeah. there's another angle doubler repair if you damage a flange still we put in the uh, L doubler so basically most of it are looking at the angle so because the structure consists of mostly angle which is stiffness or the stringer and the skin so that's why you can see here most of the example are looking at the damage of the angle there are two example at the end looking at the damage of the uh, skin so another angle Okay, another angle. For the lot loss, it's just a loss. Uh, you calculate the cross-sectional area, which you have lost due to damage, times the material strength, which is FTU or 145 times FTY. So that is the lot loss. That lot loss, so you make a doubler to to restore the loss area using a doubler and you calculate again the doubler strength by FTU or FTY time 1.5 time the, the cross sectional area of the doubler so it's, and then you compare the doubler strength over the load loss and you should get uh, the factor safety 1.5 for the skin uh, load uh, calculation is a bit tricky because the skin uh, they have uh, multiple load for example, the fuselage skin, you have load, longitudinal direction, compression and tension. You also have load circumferential due to the pressure of the skin. And we have to calculate the, the all the direction, longitudinal, lateral direction. As well as when you got the cut, you have the shear around the cut. Let me show you the, the example of how we calculate the load for the skin. Okay. okay, hold on. Okay. Okay. The exceptions. another section mostly all the repair concept are talking about else section or about section repairing of the section l t u channel uh, i channel okay that is a t channel is i channel i section uh, let's look at it's almost down to the last portion of this okay okay now it's a skin okay for the skin you can see here we have a uh, area here for this situation because this is a skin of a web of a channel so the loading still in this direction so you have tension here, tension here, and we have shear here, 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 and here. Not no action load in this direction. Action load only affected this area, and this shear, 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 shear. The load around the car are shear. So for the case of complete uh, skin, 
but if you slash you slash skin for example we have load in both direction okay here we have tension 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 also shear 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 that's why you need to work out the resultant force so, so p tension p shear and the resultant force so the loading here in to calculate the double thickness as well as the number of fastener you have to work out the resultant force